affiliates across the country and on 3news.com as well. Coming up this morning, President Kufara hints of further difficulty for the Ghanaian economy despite his administration securing an IMF bailout package in quick time. The president says challenges will not end immediately. Access to the IMF facility will not spell the immediate end of the difficulties we are in presently. Also this morning, Ghana National Association of Teachers not describes as unrealistic Vice President's promise to issue laptops to all senior high school students across the country. The commitment of the government to honor its decision of making the provisions of the laptop is a challenge. Still on education, some 500 students of the Kumasi Technical Institute recalled after authorities of the school suspended them over vandalism of school property. Much later, we're live in Nigeria where Senator Bola Ahmed Tinibu is expected to, later today to be sworn in as president. We have details of these stories and a lot more if you stay with us for the next 10 minutes. A pleasure that you could be a part of this morning's bulletin. It's streaming live on Facebook. Our handle is 3FM 927. I am Eric Mawina Egbeta. Let's get into the details. And President Kufuado says the recently secured IMF bailout package will not bring an immediate end to the country's economic challenges. Addressing the nation Sunday night, the President, however, reiterated the IMF package would be an important stepping stone to helping the Ghanaian economy recover in the long run. Ghana, some two weeks ago, secured board level approval for a 3 billion US dollar bailout package deemed by many within government as crucial in helping deal with challenges within the country's economy. The president insists his administration, however, is working to turn the current economic tides. Fellow Ghanaians, access to the IMF facility will not spell the immediate end of the difficulties we are in presently. But the fact that we've been able to negotiate such a deal sends a positive message to our trading partners, creditors, and investors. A positive message that will be underpinned by the discipline, hard work, and enterprise with which we execute the program. It should lead to the restoration of confidence and the reopening of avenues that have been closed to us this past year and a half. Well, touching on COVID, President Kufuado said the pandemic was not used as an avenue for corruption, as has been alleged. Let me make it clear that COVID expenditures, essentially unplanned, have been subject at my instigation to audit by the Auditor General and are going through parliamentary processes. We all deserve to be reassured that the crisis was not used as a cover for corrupt practices. The COVID health recovery library that was introduced to help fill some of the expenditure holes might not be the most popular tax, but I entreat all of you to bear with us. President Kufaro, there away from this, and the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has described as unrealistic. The Vice President promised to provide a laptop to each senior high school student across the country. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, speaking at the 60th anniversary celebration of the Hohua Evangelical Presbyterian SHS, said the provision of one student per one laptop policy will begin this year. According to the Vice President, this would phase out test books from across the country. The Minister for Education has also assured me that this year we will start the replacement of textbooks with laptops which are textbooks embedded in senior high schools. So you will have the laptop, you will have all the textbooks embedded with past questions, lesson plans and all of that to help the teachers and the students. That's the Vice President, Dr. Baumia Bart, President of the National Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAD, Reverend Isaac Ousu, who says the promise is not realistic. The commitment of the government to honor its decision of making the provisions 
of the laptop is a challenge. If you look at even the basic school, government is supposed to provide textbooks for new curriculum at the primary GHS and even including the secondary school. Since 2019, from KG1 to class 6, the Ministry of Education and together with GES has not been able to supply all the textbooks. The teachers who are teaching the children. In 2021, the Vice President launched the One Teacher, One Laptop. The promise was that within one year, teachers at the pre tertiary level were to receive laptop. But as I speak to you now, teachers in primary and teachers in administration, they, have, they are yet to receive the laptop. As president of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, not Reverend Isaac Owusu, will stay with education a while longer because 500 students of the Kumasi Technical Institute who were suspended on Friday over violation of school rules and vandalism of property have been recalled after an emergency uh, meeting between management of the school and parents. Parents of the affected student will, however, pay for all the damages caused by the student. Here is a news desk report. On May 17, some students of KTI went on rampage and destroyed properties in their school. This was after a security man was alleged to have manhandled some students when they returned from watching a football match outside the school without permission. The aggrieved students vandalized about four vehicles belonging to staff. Management of the school took a decision to suspend those involved in the disturbances and also others who have absented themselves for several days without authorization. In all, about 500 students were asked to go home on Friday, May 26. Principal of the Institute, Gabriel Kingsford Osei, said the decision was to instill discipline among students. The school has its code of conduct. All the discipline measures have been spelled out. It has been given to the students. Each student is having a copy. Management has agreed to recall the suspended students after the meeting with stakeholders. For now, parents of the 500 suspended students will be billed for all damages caused, whilst management is bent on instilling discipline in all students here. Iraima Bubaka with that report. To some other stories now, and civil society groups are continuing to pile pressure on government to scrap taxes on sanitary towels for girls due to the high cost of the product. Presently, there is a 32.5% tax slapped on imported sanitary pads. The CSO's platform on SDGs say they will tomorrow march to the premises of the Finance Ministry, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection and the Speaker of Parliament to, amongst many things, present a petition. While that continues, the Chief Justice nominee get to Tokonu's call for the scrapping of taxes for school and little children continues to stoke controversy. Here is Lovelyn Kunidu Asiru, the National Coordinator for the Ghana CSO platform reacting to the call by the nominee, CJ nominee. Accessibility, affordability, availability of sanitary pad is still a challenge for the average Ghanaian person. And so we, we, we want to intensify the advocacy. If we want to make menstruation a normal fact of life, then every barrier that prevents menstruation from being a normal fact of life, including availability, including accessibility, including affordability, should be removed. That's Lovelyn Kennedy Asiru. She is the national coordinator for the Ghana CSO's platform. Away from this, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Shelly Akobochi, says a policy framework to involve Ghanaians living abroad to contribute politically and economically to the country has advanced significantly. Speaking at the 2023 Global Conference for Honorary Consuls hosted in Accra, she said the policy will be presented to Parliament shortly. The Ministry is working expeditiously on the diaspora engagement policy to provide the necessary framework within which the diaspora can be constructively engaged in political, social, economic and cultural discourse towards effective mobilization and cooperation and coordination to the national development process. 
Other initiatives include the year of return and beyond the return, the proposed homeland return bill and the citizenship by investments. That's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Shale Bochi, we end with Nigerian President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinibu, who will be sworn in today in the federal capital Abuja. And Tinibu defeated 17 other candidates who took part in the February election. Uh, he secured some 8.7 million votes, meeting the first constitutional requirement to be declared winner. He also scored over 25% of the votes cast in 30 states, more than the 25 states constitutionally required out the swearing in is happening despite ongoing challenges by two of his contenders against the outcome of the elections. There'll be a lot more on this for you if you stay with us here on 3FM 92.7. But for now, though, we make way for Johnny Hughes and the rest of the Sunrise team to bring you the very best in terms of morning shows in the capital. I am Eric Mawina. I a lot more news if you log on to 3news.com.